This episode brought to you by Sereth Logistics, a leading cross-border transport company. And SRG Gold, customizing your gold and silver. In this episode... Cross over into Zimbabwe. I had this vision of boom. This is amazing. This place really, really is amazing. If you do do this dirt road, just be very careful. Welcome to Matusadona. Enjoy golden sunsets on the shore of a lake. Make the hard drive down to Wangi. I thought I could smell lion. And encounter wild moments at a dam. This one is not to be missed. Where is the elephant? Where the real spirit of overlanding is. Overlanding is something that to many different people can mean many different things. But in its simplistic form, I think overlanding at its core is basically getting out and enjoying an adventure. I overland because I enjoy the wild and that adds to the adventure and exploration of new places. Wherever you are in the world, make an excuse to get out and adventure. In this episode 3 of our Zambia and Zimbabwe adventure, we pick up after having already traveled through Botswana and into the western side of Zambia. 13 days and 1745 kilometers already traveled, we pick up as we leave Mvu Lodge and campsite and head for the Zimbabwean border post. The aim of this episode is to visit some of the national parks on the western side of Zimbabwe. With six days left to go of this adventure, enjoy as we visit new wild places. Zambia has been magic, to say the least, and adventuring this part of Southern Africa is simply stunning as we follow the mighty Zambezi River alongside the Zambezi Escarpment. The road into and out of the Lower Zambezi is a gravel road that occasionally experiences washouts during the rainy season and will take you an hour and a half to complete from Lodge to Tar Road. It is a well-used road as we pass through tribal lands and it is something else as we catch glimpses of elephants drinking on the Zambezi River's edge. And this feels like true overlanding magic and we have had good times enjoying the spectacular country that is Zambia. Rhys, what did you think of the Lower Zambezi and Mvu Lodge in Zambia? Well, the Lower Zambezi and Mvu Lodge, I really enjoyed it. It was good fun, got some fishing in, which was awesome, uh, great campsite, great ablutions, awesome fire, fire area, um, yeah, and lots of wildlife, including the one that scares Ryan the most. <laughs> and what would you advise people coming to the Lower Zambezi National Park or this area? Uh, the Lower Zambezi, I would advise just keep your wits about you. There's a lot of wildlife all over the place. You don't have to be in the park. You can be pretty much anywhere and you could run into elephants. You could run into lion, wild dogs. So just keep your wits about you. Make sure you can see everything that you need to see. Don't drive like a maniac. Keep your eyes open. And how is overlanding for you? Overlanding for me, this is my first big trip. It's exhausting, <laughs> but good fun. It's up early, set up late, get there, and it's good fun though. I mean, there's nothing. I enjoy it. And the long hours on the road? Uh, besides the heavy clutch, 
they're perfect. So it's all very scenic. Unless you get into the cities, then it gets a bit boring and monotonous. Um, but yeah, coming to a new country is always nice because you, you never know what to expect around the next corner. And where are we off to next? Next we're off to Zimbabwe. That's going to be a different one. But good. Been to Zimbabwe before. So yeah, let's see what it's like. Back on the tar, we realized that the two and a half hour earmark trip is going to take us a good four and a half hours to do on account of windy roads, the border crossing and the odd stop here and there. The excitement levels are up as we can't wait to be back in new parts of beautiful Zimbabwe. The roads are in OK Nick on the way to the Zimbabwean border post Take care when driving back up the Zambezi escarpment and down again. Watch out for the occasional rock slides and potholes, some are quite bad. But overall, this is such a scenic trip as we pull into the Zambian border post and make our way to Zimbabwe. We have just left Zambia, a lot easier to get out of Zambia than to get into Zambia. And we're crossing over, and I never knew this, we have to cross over the Kariba Lake Wall. Now, just behind me is the construction to try and sort out the issue with the structure of the dam wall at the lower end. What's happened is when the sluice gates open, it's created a massive, massive glory hole at the bottom of the dam. And if I tell you guys, it's about 80 meters down the side of the wall. It is unbelievable. We're gonna cross over now and get into Zimbabwe. We just, uh, we just, there's, there's parking here to get out and have a look at the damn wall. And shame, a fella's just come up to us now and has asked us to please get across the wall because they're going to do some blasting and we can actually film it from the other side of the damn wall on the Zimbabwean side. So he's, everyone is saying, go, 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 go. So there's blasting that's going to happen. I hope we can catch it on camera. And that's pretty exciting, absolutely exciting. But have a look at this. The Kariba Dam is a double curvature concrete arch dam in the Kariba Gorge of the Zambezi River Basin between Zambia and Zimbabwe. The dam stands 128 meters tall and 579 meters long. The dam forms Lake Kariba, which extends for 280 kilometers and holds 185 cubic kilometers of water. in about two minutes. Well, that was a bit of a disappointment. I had this vision of boom! And it was very, very controlled explosion. And uh, it just said, and that was it. There was no, I thought pieces of rock were going to fall on us. Maybe the dam will crack open and burst out and we'd have to get to Kariba quickly. Well, that was uneventful. Baboons are running. They don't even look bothered. <laughs> well, <laughs> when at Kariba do as the Caribans do. Okay, so just to give you an update, we are in Zimbabwe and it's a good feeling to be here. We absolutely loved Zambia. We crossed over this afternoon at about half past one into Zimbabwe. Very little areas or issues at the Zimbabwean side. We crossed the Kariba Dam or Lake Wall and it was something spectacular. They were blasting and uh, it was uh, uneventful, to say the least. We thought it was going to be something epic, and it just wasn't like that what you see in the movies. But all of that does not matter. We've been on the road now for how long, Reese? Uh, six hours. 
Six hours. Six hours it's taken us to get from the Mvu Lodge and campsite to, to where, where we are now. Wartog campsite. Now there's a little bit of a story behind this and I hope I don't come across too negative but I initially found and searched for campsites before I left South Africa and Lomagandi campsite lodge and campsite came up quite uh, quite prevalent and we obviously pulled in there this afternoon after a hard days on the road and uh, they wanted to bill us 20 US dollars per tent per night and five dollars per person per night so that was equivalent to 50 US dollars 50 US dollars that's 950 Rand at the time of this recording of May 2023 and and the campsites in all honesty look like they're right on top of each other so you don't even you're not really getting anything for your 950 rand and um so we did the next best thing we pulled over to Wartox under the advisement of the caretakers there <laughs> good old chaps and thanks for the support they watch the shows and they said go and try Wartog. and we've pulled into Wartog campsite and I tell you, it's 10 US dollars per person per night, flat. That's it. And we walked into the restaurant, good vibes, music going on in the background, happy people greeting us. And we've got three, four elephant swimming in the Kariba. We've got a herd of zebra. We had water buck moving through the reeds here. Ground hornbill moving just in front of us. And I tell you what, that's worth 950 but Warthog don't change your prices please <laughs> encourage people to come here and the way you do that is by offering them great rates good beer and good food but yeah Warthog thus far absolutely loving it brilliant and my first cold Zambezi as in Rome do as the Romans mm -hmm. exactly Zambezi This is amazing. This place really, really is amazing. We are on the shores of the Lake Kariba and I'm sitting here now and we've got elephant that have just pulled in to the inlet or stream that flows into the Kariba. Only a few places in Africa that you can get to experience things like this and this is one of them and I'm so happy that we came into Warthog campsites absolutely magic Good morning, and uh, it's a good morning indeed. We stayed at Warthog Lodge and Campsite last night, which was fantastic. If you get to stay and visit Warthog Lodge and Campsite, and I suggest you do, make sure to order yourself the lemon butter bream. It was fantastic. We are driving into Kariba Town, pick and pay, stock up, and then onwards march for three nights to Matusa Dona. We were going to stop at Chisarira, but it's just far too expensive. It's a hundred US dollars, so we are not doing Chisarira, unfortunately. And um, we will then push on from Matusa Dona to Chakabika in Wangi. And I'm looking forward to that because that'll be a spot of proper wild camping. And that'll be something special to look forward to. But yeah, join us as the adventure continues here in Zimbabwe, driving the Kariba Lakeside shoreline, and it is absolutely stunning. It 
is nine o'clock in the morning and we've just left the town of Kariba. We pulled into a pick and pay and we grabbed some odds and sods, just a restock, filled up with fuel. Everything is in US dollars, so it hits the wallet quite hard, if I'm honest. We put 60 US dollars of fuel in just to top it up, help us get to Matusa Donna. I think it equivalates to about 32 liters of diesel. And um, yeah, even the shops, I think I had the most expensive bill I've ever had. It was 128,000 Zimbabwe dollar or one, which is quite crazy. Uh, which is about 75 US dollars thereabouts. So yeah, an expensive morning to say the least. I mean, we didn't buy much potatoes. Um, hot dog some cool drinks and uh, waters you know just the, just the butter the, the op stuff the stuff that when there's two of you it just seems to go a little bit faster than usual we're currently driving now I've punched in on tracks for Africa we're going to Tashinga campsite in the Matusa Dona National Park and um, yeah, it says we've got 370 kilometers to do and I think we're going to join up with the Karoi dirt road I just don't know when but what an adventure I tell you driving here is absolutely spectacular it's beautiful on the Kariba side of the lake there are a lot of mountains and hills and it's just so picturesque but yeah I think it's going to be a long day on the road fingers crossed everything works out it seems that we are nursing the the Ford Ranger there's a couple of odd strange sounds metal on metal knocking that is coming from the front end of the vehicle and these roads are very windy and um, very uneven tar tarmac surface so it's a bit of a challenge to drive but anyways let's carry on with the adventure and let's just enjoy we make it to the Karoi Binga Road turnoff. This turnoff is clearly marked and is before the town of Karoi when driving from Kariba. It is what appears to be a well used dirt road. Expect heavy corrugation on most stretches with the occasional degraded and worn washouts. Deflate your tires when driving off the tar road and enjoy this road as you cross over single track bridges that will make this part of your trip truly unforgettable. From a driver's perspective, this is a road that will make you feel like you are in your element as you pass through rural settlements and informal farmland amidst the Zimbabwean Lower Zambezi escarpment and the bush is looking at its best. still driving it's been a long day on the road been in the car for six hours and I think we've still got maybe another three hours to go we've been on the dirt road for probably four of those six and um, yeah the road is not too bad to be to be honest I'm okay with the road being like this it is quite a hard road to drive it's not in the worst condition but it's not in the best either and uh, but it's a rural road so well, what do you expect the total distances that we've done today i think we 
when we started the drive was at 343 kilometers from Wartok campsite. Yeah, so you, you have about 100, 100 kilometers of what I'd call semi-graded road with some pretty gnarly sections. Uh, it goes from a two lane down to a single lane, down to a really thin single lane. And then we have 84 kilometers to drive from the gate into the Matusa Donna National Park or to Tashinga Camp. We've used Tracks for Africa the whole time on this trip and it hasn't skipped a bit once. So pretty tough with that on the Garmin. We haven't seen any wildlife or any signs of wildlife. If you do do this dirt road, just be very careful for oncoming traffic. Uh, you know, we nearly had a head on collision a little bit earlier. Passing through a Tsetse fly control gate, we finally make it to the Matusa Donna National Park turnoff and head towards the Tashinga campsite. Keep an eye out for the turn off to the check-in African Parks office on the right. Welcome to Matusadona. We left the gate about an hour ago, the main check-in gate to Matusa Dona. And um, it's a, I think it's an 85 kilometer drive in. And it's amazing because you go through, you go, wow, you, you go through the escarpment, you come down the escarpment, you go up Gomos, you go down Gomos, you go through rivers, and they're all dry at this time of the year, being May. And uh, it's a tough drive, eh? It, just because it's long. It's a long drive. It's a long drive. And it's tough because you're... You're constantly... Constantly... Trying to watch where you put your tires. Because there's some sheer drops, man. And how beautiful does that look? Look behind me. It's a stream, a stream, one of the rivers that flows in to the Lake Kariba. Oh, it's just a beautiful place, man. Really, really beautiful. Such a picturesque drive, but it is a long drive. So, you know, I keep looking at the tracks for Africa on the Garmin, and, you know, kilometers are only dropping are only dropping very slowly we're tired we're actually we're actually pretty knackered if i'm honest we're pretty knackered we just want to get into camp uh, we haven't seen any wildlife no wildlife at all and very few signs of wildlife on the way to Tashinga camp but the strange thing is is when we turned off of the main dirt road to drive towards Matusa Dona, we saw a lot, and I mean a lot, of lion spur. A lot of lion spur in the road, a lot of lion spur. And we chatted to one of the uh, rangers for Africa Parks, and he said there are plenty of lion here. In fact, that side of the park, as you drive in, is a pride of 14 lion. Oh, it's just quite nice, I think. But yeah, just beautiful. Eh? All these reds, golds, yellows, greens, just wow. It's just so, so pretty. Yeah, let's get to camp. Exiting the escarpment, we cross the last few riverbeds and as the roads look worked on and fresh, we feel like we are getting close. It's been a long one.
So we've just pulled in to what will now be camp for the next three nights and we are here at Tashinga campsite and we're right on the Lake Kariba. It is just simply stunning. We've got a magic sunset happening in the background over there. We didn't choose that side of camp because there's quite a few people already there and there's another couple or family just to our left here but this when the sun rises tomorrow morning is going to be something truly remarkable. What a drive. That drive in from the top gate all the way down the escarpment. Just remember when you do come to the top gate you do have to go and sign in. It's 900 meters up the road and on the right and uh, you get to meet the Africa Parks chaps there and you will sign in and uh, you will then hear the words you are not too far from Tashinga camp well you are you are 75 kilometers maybe 80 kilometers from the campsite and it is a drive it's a drive that I don't know I think just because we're so tired it just didn't want to end so we just carried on and on and on and it's just so beautiful and we're just tired it's been a long day on the road again and we are now day 14 in on our trip day 14 in on the trip so we are absolutely shattered you know i'm tired it, reese is tired reese reckons the overlanding game is not easy and it's not you know you're working late nights and then you are up early and you're working all the time washing up cleaning up Anyways, I'm not complaining. How can I complain when you're in a beautiful place like this? Really, have a look at this. We set up camp and enjoy the atmosphere of this stunning place around a fire and call it an early night. Absolutely shattered, we take the new day off as a means to catch up and rest. Which at Tashinga Camp is a very welcome relief, and the day is easy going. It's easy to realize that at Tashinga Campsite, the wild is all around you, the camp is alive, and in all honesty, with the Lake Kariba waves crashing on the shoreline, we can't help but feel unbelievably settled and relaxed immersed in the sights, sounds and smells of the wild. Tashinga camp comes alive early mornings and evenings and keep an eye out for baboons and elephants that could visit at all times of the day but rest assured that the African park staff are always available to help and keep a watchful eye out over your campsites. There is plenty of space to camp under large trees that supply a great balance between shade and sun for solar charge. Wood can be ordered from the camp staff and in some campsites you have the option to make your fire on the ground in dugout pits.
be aware that this is a wild campsite. Elephant, hyena, lion and leopard frequently visit these campsites. So be cautious and always try to put yourself in a considered position of safety. So it is time, it'll be the second time we empty the fuel off the top of the Ranger into the tank, the main tank. Yesterday was a long drive and I didn't have enough dollars to completely fill up the tank. So we're at three quarters fuel left. So just pump this 80 into the reserve tank and the main tank and all should be good. But yeah. The sun is getting up and it's getting hot and I'm making my brother-in-law work in his keep on this trip. But it's strange though because I'm the one up here and he's the one down there. The Gotta be honest with you, I really, really enjoy this front runner roof rack. Very capable, very strong piece of kit. Can hold my weight can hold 80 liters and I'd say another 30 kgs of boxed goods on the top of the roof just brilliant everything with that this front runner roof rack makes so much sense and I'm very happy with the new alignment of everything so a big shout out to the guys at front runner thank you so much guys for helping me out and uh, sorting it out for the perfect setup I really appreciate it Sitting up on the roof, just got this extended jiggler. I always use an extended jiggler just in case you need extra length. And uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, it's getting hot here. It was overcast this morning. We've had a lovely morning just relaxing in camp, trying to catch up, find a breather, get a bit of a break. We we're absolutely shattered. And um, yeah, just put up the Easy On 270 degree Manta Ray uh, awning and it's just absolutely fantastic. It's been a great, great addition to the Ford Ranger and uh, the eye camper behind me, absolutely loving it. Being able to store all my bedding in, what a pleasure. And carrying Reese's bedding and his pillow. So it's three pillows, extra bedding, plenty of space left to spare over. The Tashinga campsite thus far, absolutely superb. We do have two groups of neighbors. They're very peaceful and quiet people. And uh, it's always nice to have an elephant strolling through camp just add such wild and wilderness experiences to a campsite such as Tishinga. So, so a really big shout out to Africa Pox for, for helping us. We've got no mobile network connection or data connection. So the chaps have kindly assisted us to go to the office and plug into their Wi-Fi just so we can reach out and say house it to the wives let them know we're okay and uh, I tell you Africa Park's doing such a good job here at Matusa Dona roads are in excellent condition and uh, just such friendly people and always willing to help and go the extra mile so thank you Africa Parks what a day it's been at Matusa Dona and absolutely loving it The African Parks Group offers three self-catering and fully catered campsite units to those that prefer this. The camp has a newly built communal ablution block, three toilets and three showers per his and hers bathroom, with external wash-up facilities.
sunsets in this campsite are some of the best I have experienced. Simply spectacular and absolutely unforgettable. Remember to leave the campsite cleaner than you found it, so cover up those fire pits when you leave and dispose of any and all rubbish collected during your stay. Matusadona National Park covers 1,400 square kilometers of flat plains and rugged mountains protecting a diverse flora and fauna. The creation of Lake Kariba caused profound ecological changes, in particular the availability of grazing on the lakeshore which has contributed to an increase in the populations of large mammals in the park, especially those of elephant and cape buffalo. Good morning and uh, an early early morning for Reese and I trying to capture that sunrise this morning and it was spectacular I've been having very restless sleeps I'm not I'm not sleeping too well if I'm honest um, you know I just can't seem to catch up and uh, every little sound I hear at night I'm up and properly up but this morning we are doing our first Matusadona game drive and we just had a really nice encounter with a, an elephant bull on the side of the road and he seemed calm and peaceful he did move his ears and his feet a bit just to let us know that he was there and we kept a good safe distance maybe 100 meters from the elephant and he seemed fine lots of impala a lot of rams and this time of the year it's the rutting season so these guys are running around this place owning it and making a lot of noise and if you know anything about impala that sound is almost devilish it's uh, the horrid sound and that, that goes off the whole night so I think that's one of the reasons as to why I'm not sleeping too well but yeah a pretty uneventful evening, nothing too major to report. Some weird sounds last night we heard, I think it's the village in the area. I think they had a bit of a shindig last night, which is not always lacquer to hear. But anyways, we're uh, driving the roads now and uh, we've just passed Rob's point. And yeah, we're just going to see. It's not a long drive, I don't think, but we do. We do need to get those uh, lithium batteries in the back charged. So we're just going to plot around and see what we see. Rhys, what do you have to say for yourself and for the trip thus far, buddy? Uh, trip's been fantastic. I've uh, really enjoyed everything. Uh, different places I've never been to. So, yeah, new places, new exciting things. Well, what do you think about Matusadona? You don't get off that easily. Uh, Matusadona to me is a bit, I, I really dig the lake. That's amazing. Uh, I don't know, there's, there's something about it that uh, you know, I can't put my finger on it. There's a lot of impala and a lot of, it feels very game farmy for them at the moment because you haven't seen anything like really crazy. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, the views and the, the scenery is amazing. But yeah, we're just trying to find that wow factor. But isn't the Kariba the wow factor? I mean, you're camping right on a lake. It's still a lake. Oh, but it's Lake Kariba. That was a lake. Man, stop. Why are you always so <laughs> negative about Matusa Dona? Bro? I'm not. You said I like it. Reese is always very negative Early at this time of the morning. He unfortunately doesn't drink coffee because if he did, he'd be, he's missing out on my extremely amazing coffee 
And yes, I just said that, Ed. But uh, very grumpy this morning. How's it sleeping in your little ground tent, Reese? Yeah, it's amazing because I get sleep. So, yeah, I enjoy it. <laughs> Matusadona was proclaimed a non-hunting area towards the end of 1958 before being declared a game reserve in 1963. In 1975 it became a national park under the Parks and Wildlife Act of Rhodesia. Okay, so, you know, I don't know these elephants here in Matusadona and um, the rangers say that they are you know, fairly calm and placid, but we've got a fella standing in the road and he's quite a big boy. And then he's got a mate of his just on the right, uh, just feeding on the bushes. So he's quite reluctant to get out of the road. And um, I think, what, how far are we away from him now? He's 50 meters? 50 meters. Yeah, we're about 50 meters from him and we're just parked up in neutral. And uh, yeah, hopefully this big guy moves, but he's, yeah, he, I don't think he's one to be messed around with. I mean, he's got quite decent-sized tusks. And like I say, if you don't know the elephants and you, you're not familiar with an area, you know, you, there's no there's no rush. You're on a game drive, you know, just enjoy. We have an elephant coming up behind us. Oh, are you kidding, bro? And we've got an elephant coming up behind us. Mom. What do we do? Oh, I don't know, dude. We do too. Shit. Yeah, so we've got an elephant coming up behind us. We've got two elephants in front of us. And uh, we've just decided to hear yeah, he's moving, he's moving. Wow, he's a big boy as well. Eh? There's the same two I filmed I yesterday. Don't want to go forward. I don't think you can go forward, mate. Those things are too big, eh? So, yeah, so, hey, I tell you what, eh? this is quite an adventure. Um, yeah, I think you're making the best move here. Reese is to reverse. The one has gone off onto the right here of the bush, so I don't know how deep he's going to go in. Um, but, yeah. You know that series on uh, discovery when animals go bad? Well, elephants can be very predictable, but they can also be very unpredictable. And uh, let's put it this way, we don't want to be the first vehicle that gets nailed in Matusadona. Woo! <laughs> Good start to the game drive. And it's so bizarre because I was saying to Reese yesterday, when we came into Matusadona, we didn't see, we didn't see a... Just listen there in the bushes, eh? We didn't see a single animal on the road. We didn't, we saw not so much evidence of activity on the road. But yeah, this morning already we've seen four really, really big elephants, like proper sized elephants. All males, all bulls. I don't see any must stains on the sides of their faces. So I don't think they're in musk. But, yeah, things can happen, eh? So, just try and put yourself in a better position. I think that's the only advice I can give you. Poaching in the National Park was a big problem and a deterrent to visitors. But the African Parks Group in partnership with Zimbabwe National Parks and the surrounding communities has made impressive progress in deterring poaching and as a result this is one national park that is on the rise to claim its spot as one of the best in Zimbabwe. Just to give you an update we've been driving around now in the Matusadona National Park on a game drive for Let's say about two and a half hours three hours we haven't seen any 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 wildlife and i think that's primarily because there is just so much thick 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 bush and it's relentless the thick bush it never eases up we we, we took a dirt road that is yeah good in some sections there are some river crossings is where the road will obviously be a little bit harder to do and a couple of off camber little obstacles. In Matusadona I think 
there might be an opportunity to do a lot of bush clearing uh, I think you know there's not enough it seems to me there's not enough area or space for planes game to move around in this area or on this road in particular that we've taken we're heading back we'll probably see more in the campsite than we will do on a game drive speed bump Aldris is becoming Nasa Alatia. Heading back to camp and realizing that we had it to ourselves on account of neighbors moving on, we packed up our campsite and headed to a spot that really was spectacular. We had Tishinga for our last night all to ourselves. Magic. For dinner tonight, my man. Tonight we keep it very simple. We're doing lamb chops, bra chops, and potatoes roasted in the fire. Bit of butter, bit of seasoning. Why are and we it. keeping it simple? Because we're quite tired, <laughs> and we have a long drive tomorrow. Where are we headed? We are heading to Wangi. So yeah, and it's the road that we came in on, which took forever. So yeah, we've got to take the road that takes forever to get out again. So it's going to be a long one. So keep it simple. Keep energy. Tomorrow's a new day. So over the three nights of camping here on the Kariba shoreline, we notice something amazing and very peculiar. At night, you'll notice thousands of lights glimmering on the horizon line of the Lake Kariba. After researching this massive phenomenon, I found this news article and as posted on the Herald as breaking news, save Kariba from being fish dry, it is formally estimated from an official survey that there are over a thousand Kapenta fishing rigs coming in from the side of Zambia and 600 more from the side of Zimbabwe to overfish and poach the small sardine-like fish locally known as Kapenta, a staple protein-rich diet for many populations throughout Africa. To see this firsthand, we ask the question of sustainability and no matter how amazing it might look from our first world camping chairs around the fire, I realize that something just isn't right with this picture. A massive shout out to my mate Ed for lending me his trail camera as we capture this rather special visitor to the outskirts of our camp. A side striped jackal. Brilliant. We did have hyena on the edges of camp every night and did hear a lion in the far off distance. But with a big drive ahead we close up shop and rest up for an early morning.
good morning and uh, a very early morning this morning as we make our way out of the lovely Matusadona National Park Matusadona what do you need to know about Matusadona Matusadona at the moment and thankfully so is under management from Africa Parks and they've got a very big job they're obviously bringing it out of being quite derelict and maybe not necessarily so functional so they've got a big job in doing that and they've started with all the main roads in the national park they have quite an operation going on at the offices and look well worth and capable of straightening out Matusadona there's quite a bit that Africa Parks has to do with the community they have to form relationship they have to work with the communities in and around the Matusadona National Park and it's something that they pride themselves in and I think it's a very great idea things like training game rangers and scouts at the moment I would say Matusadona is not really a self-drive game drive reserve the bush is very very thick at this time of the year in May 2023 and you can't really see much wildlife the further you drift away from the campsite however at the campsite it's a totally different story all the game comes to you and you will experience amazing wild encounters and for those reasons Matusadona is great for a two or three night stay I would say yeah it's a really lovely place and a place I'm so happy to have finally made it to it's one of those tick off destinations for myself and now we just enjoy the adventure to Hwangi. Stick with us folks as we travel a really hard road number one out of the Matusadona National Park that's about two hours and then on the road to Hwangi. We're on a gravel road and on Tracks for Africa it says 4x4 gravel road and it's 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 a proper drive a proper proper drive I'm driving with 1.8 bar in the front and 2 bar in the back Thirty-three inch tires are working. I'm very impressed by what they've done. I mean, some of the stuff we've driven: shale, hard rocks. We have hit a couple of big holes, though. I'm not going. I'm not going to lie. We had to readjust the whole back because everything essentially jumped around. And if anything, that might be one of the biggest problems with having loading space in the back of any vehicle really so we just had to realign everything in the back and we're driving through villages and heading towards Hwangi driving now for a good four hours and I have my conclusion on the dirt road from Karoi to Binga. I reckon it's a very very tough road and there are parts of this road where two kilometers an hour is too fast. The vehicle is absolutely work. The car man I've I feel so bad for it today and I'm taking a hammering myself but I know Reese is too it's hard going we are trying to remain in high spirits uh, we have 260 kilometers to go to get to the town of Bwangi I don't know which villages we are driving through quite a few settlements happy people and uh, sorry about the dust We've 
just hit the tar road and I tell you after spending six hours on the dirt road it almost feels trippy to be on a tar road. How was that drive Riz? Exhausting. All I did was watch for potholes and big holes. Can't be potholes, potholes on a tar road. Yeah, I just watched for big holes and where the road was no road. So yeah, it's been non-stop. My brain's sore, my eyes are sore. And I think I inhaled 500 tons of dust. <laughs> there was a lot of dust. Reese, are you looking forward to Wangi? What are your expectations, bud? Uh, never been, so yeah. Looking forward to see what it is and how it is and how wild it can be. I'm not gonna lie, I'm in a tent, so on the ground could be exciting. And uh, the big question, what's for dinner? I have no idea yet. <laughs> Come on, you're the chef. I know, but I have no idea. So we've just got to Wangi and the time now is half past three in the afternoon. We've got about 32 kilometers to get to Cinematella where we've got to pay our park fees and our vehicle entry and then we've got to make it to Chakabika. And I think the speed limit in Wangi is 30, 30, 40 k's an hour. So if you work that out, it's about two hours drive roughly, give or take. So. We are driving now through the coal mines and I've done this before in a previous episode. We're driving through the coal mines, but yeah, we're, we're moving hastily just because time is not on our side. A wrong decision driving through the park meant for meeting up with the washed away bridge and road as the sun was setting. We turned back only to drive all the way back to the main entry gate and then lost our way to the Chakabika Lodge and campsite. We did make it finally to the lodge. Good morning. And an early morning here in Hwangi at Chakabika Private Lodge and tonight campsite. So let me catch you and get you up to speed with what happened yesterday. It was quite a schlep if I'm honest. Probably if not the longest day on the road we've had on this trip thus far. Uh, driving from Matusadona to Hwangi will take you a better part of eight hours to do. We left at 7 o'clock in the morning and we drove into Hwangi at half past 3 in the afternoon. We drove into Cinematella. Really nice to see the reception area looking so green, so fresh, so welcoming. They even have a little Coke and Fanta kiosk machine, which was quite lacquer because we just bought a nice cold Coke in the Zimbabwean traditional glass bottle. And I tell you what, if you know anything about Coke and the Zimbabwean glass bottle, there is nothing that tastes quite like it and it's super fresh. We eventually pull into the lodge at about half past nine in the evening. But all of that doesn't matter. When you wake up in the morning, number one, feeling actually quite fresh. I think I got some sleep last night, which is, which is brilliant because I, I haven't been sleeping too well. We had elephant come into the campsite last night and uh, he was busy feeding off of the trees and again it was superb eh? absolutely superb so a brilliant day and today we game drive so let's see what we see Reese, how are you feeling this morning man i'm a little bit tired that's due to the fact i had elephants ripping branches down around me the whole night i was quite cozy in my bungalow with a 
real mattress, not sleepy on the floor anymore. Wow, tilting out again. Feel good, re-energized, revitalized, and ready to rock and roll. Ryan. Yeah. Whereabouts are we? What are we up to? Oh man, we are in the Wangi National Park and we've just had a really cool morning game drive. We haven't seen much in the way of planes game or anything really, but the bush is very thick and the leaves, the Mopani leaves are going from green to orange, which looks spectacular through the lens. But we are here now at Baobab Pan and uh, when we pulled in, I thought I could smell lion. They've got a very f like unique smell, but the smell is gone now. But we're making a cup of coffee. We're sticking very close to the vehicle and we're keeping an eye out in the bush because like I say, it's very thick. But I just wanted to tell you and show you something. I'm using this hammer down coffee. Now I bought this. This one here, this is the harden up coffee. This. Sorry, all the doves took off. This is really, really nice coffee and it's a fresh pack. We've been using the other one, which is really strong. I think that one's called Harden Up. But this is just Harden Up and this is a really good coffee. So yeah, let's make that cup of coffee and let's stay vigilant for it. We make our way to the Cinematella Park offices to pay up for our stay in Huangi for the next two nights but also with the purpose to visit the Cinematella campsites and viewing deck to have a spot of lunch. Hello, welcome to Cinematella in Wangi National Park. I hope you enjoyed your trip. You know, everyone always talks about when they come to Cinematella, the view. And yes, the view is absolutely spectacular. But in this little story, I think it's about a glimmer of hope. Um, and that for me is that since the two years I've been here last, there's a little bit of progress. Cinematella, the main head office is looking good. You know, they've, they've got some, they've planted some lovely flowers, the grass is looking nice and green and it looks a lot more welcoming than the last time I came here. And I believe George was telling me that they've actually started renovating two of the bungalow units. making a nice chip and mayonnaise sandwich chip and cheese mayonnaise sandwich what you got going on there is making some salt and vinegar 
crisps with mayo and cheese sandwiches. Nice and simple. I think it sounds delicious. Of the mother. After a quick lunch stop, we make our way and head for Masuma Dam. The roads in Hwangi are just how any overlander would prefer them. Built for the off-road enthusiast driver. No low rider sedans in Hwangi, that's for sure. Expect gravel road washouts on low-lying bridges, corrugations on straighter road sections and the odd rocky outcrop section. Loving it is an understatement as I finally get to explore more of this area in Hwangi. So, we've just come to a real magic spot. In fact, I think I saw this spot on 5410's YouTube video and on Andrew St. Pierre White's video. And it is just stunning. And that is Masuma Dam. If you come to Huangi, I reckon early morning, if you can, make a beeline straight to Masuma Dam. It is a hive of activity. There are 18 hippo in this dam and there are what looks like to be four super crocs with one of them being the absolute croc boss of bosses it's a massive croc animals come down here to drink we've got three white headed vultures just drinking the fresh water that's pumped up from the borehole and uh, what a place what an absolute place to be I reckon we should have just headed here first, hey Rhys? Yeah, this place is incredible. It's incredible. Yeah. yeah, we're just enjoying. And I hope you are too. This is fantastic, simply fantastic. We've got some Impala coming down to drink. And the big boy croc has moved. And the big boy croc, the croc boss has moved. Gee whiskers, he's a tank. Mm. sitting here for about an hour I'll tell you what happened was the big crocs they pulled into the water and they started looking like they were taking up position at key points around the dam and uh, I'd say 10 minutes 15 minutes after they got in the water all the animals started coming in we've had kudu, waterbuck, warthog, impala 
essentially all coming to Masuma Dam midday to drink water. It's, it's fantastic. Baboons, like I think the biggest troop of baboons I've ever seen, came through drinking water. It's borehole fed, so it's got a pump and there's fresh water coming up from the ground. So the one crocodile has positioned itself in such a way that anything that likes fresh, clean water is in a death trap for sure. She's, she's right on the edge and every time the baboons came past or Impala came past, she just slowly lowered her head and was waiting. But yeah, what a place, eh? Head to Masuma Dam. You come to Wangi, you make sure you head to Masuma Dam and, 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 and sit here for a good hour, two hours. I think we could sit here the whole day. We can't, but we could. And it's just spectacular, absolutely fantastic. With this being our second night and last one in Hwangi National Park and having permissions granted by the owners of Chakabika to do a spot of wild camping, we head back to the lodge and then onwards to what would now be our campsite for the night, now named Sausage Tree Campsite. Spectacular! We set up Reese's ground tent and then head back to the lodge to grab some wood for the night and to show you this amazing private lodge. It is simply a stunning place and the owners have a slice of heaven in this fantastic part of the national park. So, there has been a discussion or two on whether or not this lodge will be opened up as a self-catered lodge to the public, and maybe campsites. But, these things take time. All I can say is that what a privilege it is to be able to show you this place and talk about first class. Chakabika boasts five air-conditioned chalets with external showers that overlooks the main man-made water trough, the Chakabika River and Spring Source. It has a self-catering kitchen with fridge and freezers an outdoor patio and cozy outside fireplace. We really love this spot for its integration in the landscape and wild and as always look forward to getting back and visiting it again. So we are camping at Chakabika underneath this huge sausage tree. Now I think about 90% of its fruit has fallen and I'm just keeping it a little bit down and I'll tell you why. Just to the left of me is the Chakabika River and if I tell you it's 8 meters from where we are camped that's how far it is and we're a bit nervous and on edge because the elephants use this river as number one a highway Number two, they dig for water in the river sand and they like to drink fresh, fresh water. We've heard a hell of a lot of elephant activity like grumblings, screamings and shoutings further down the river. And when we pulled in, there were maybe nine elephants here. So we're just going to sit quiet now assess the situation if we don't like what's going on and the elephants don't react to us quite nicely or the way that we're hoping they do we will pack up and go back to the lodge but i tell you what it's absolutely exhilarating a bit nervous if i'm honest i don't think anyone's camped here hopefully a magic night but stay tuned it's so fantastic to be in the wangi and even better to be a chakabika camping 
my brother-in-law Reese was shivering and shaking behind that camera, man. I tell you, it's next level. It's next level. But yeah, let's enjoy the sunset and the fire. Yes, sir. What's going on, buddy? Tell us what's happening here. How are you feeling? Good. We are camping in the wild. We've had elephants going bananas. We had them snorting and trumpeting and growling and farting and carrying on with life like this. Is what <laughs> There's one behind us breaking trees, eh? Yeah, dude. I don't, it's like a different world. This. I don't know if they're happy elephants. Like, I don't think it's old Dumbo's in these woods. <laughs> so it's a bit scary. Actually, it's quite scary. Not gonna lie. And my biggest thing, my biggest fear at the moment, is I'm in a ground tent. So I'm in a ground tent, so I'm close to their feet. You're up by their head. I don't know which is better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying not to think about it. I don't know if I want to open my tent and see feet or open my <laughs> tent and see eyeball. <laughs> I tell you, I had that one at a Mvu campsite then. That was really scary, man. Really, really scared me. Yeah, but I, yeah. Like this one in the bushes, yeah. They're breaking things. I can hear it. I can hear it. I'm just waiting for it to come running out of me. <laughs> So yeah, it's a bit scary. <laughs> it sounds very close. Where eh? is he? He's in here. I'm just trying to find trees that are moving. And I think they all know we're here. We've been... Hey, hey, hey. I think they see our fire <laughs> and they want to come sit by us. I tell you, I've never seen your eyes this open the whole trip. Yeah, this is bad. Wasting torches, yeah. yeah I know the, the torch batteries, we're charging other big torches. This little torch is gonna die. Then we're just gonna sit in the darkness. Where is the elephant? But that one sounds much better. So, yeah, this is as wild as wild as it gets, I reckon. We're busy contemplating. We've said we'll leave it till half past seven to make a decision on whether we stay, or whether we go. And uh, I'm beginning to settle down now. Just just because the elephants aren't screaming and barking and growling as loud as they were earlier. I mean, it just reverberates right through this whole riverbed. I don't know if you've ever heard an elephant screaming proper, but it goes right through you, eh? It just goes right through you. And we heard lion, actually, maybe about 10 minutes ago, and quite far off that way. Far off in the distance, but stay tuned. This is... This is, this is something else. I feel I feel so worn out from being on edge. Eh? Yes. I tell you what, leave a comment. What do you think? Do you think we're making this up? Do you think you could camp in a place like this that's totally wild where elephants are not really familiar with people? Are we making the right decision by doing this? Should we go back to the lodge or should we stay here? Um, by tomorrow, all answers will be revealed. But by the time you watch this, it might be an interesting thing to just think about. And what, if you've watched it, we've survived. And if you've watched it, then obviously we've made it through the night, based on whatever decision we end up making. But is this something you look forward to doing, like proper wild camping? And uh, if so, is this something you would do here? If you were here, you can smell the elephant. I mean, if, if you were here, I tell you what, it's not the atmosphere of the area. I think the atmosphere of the area is pretty cool. It's just the unknown, the unexpected. You know, we have this idea that the elephant will pop out any minute and be right here in front of us. Yeah, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but like I said, the elephants here so far seem very um, well mannered. I'm okay, we've got a good fire going, we've got a nice light going, and we've got the big torch charging in the background. That uh, Ace Beam X70, I tell you what, that thing is an absolute daylight so i think we'll be all right what would you do leave a comment down below and don't forget to smash that like button this is amazing brought to you from wangi 
by us 4x4 Ventures, taking you on the adventure. Really has been an adventure for sure. But we'll chat later. Okay, so what a night it was. We stayed underneath the massive sausage tree down at the pumps at Chakabika Lodge and now campsite. It was awesome. I mean, we were a little bit worried at the beginning, you know, with the elephants using that river as a highway and also as a place to get fresh water underneath the sand. We were quite worried how they would react to us, but as Ranger Nyati said, who's based here at Chakabika Lodge, elephants can reason. And I think he's absolutely hit the nail on the head. They came in reason, they saw that we were in the area and they just behaved, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Could it have gone wrong? Yeah, maybe, but I think when we drove in there, we realized that it was going to be a good evening and boy, it was. I think it's the best night's sleep I've had in the last six nights. So I take that as a win. But this morning we head to Robin's camp and then onwards to Panamatenga. By this stage of any trip, we no longer go by timings between one destination and the other. At 18 days in, we simply know better. The simple fact is that we aim to try and make it to any campsite destination by 3.30 in the afternoon, as best case, 5.30 at worst. Let's head for the Zimbabwe Botswana border post, and sure enough, Wangi isn't done with us just yet. We've just come across a lone bull on the road and he's unhappy. He's unhappy, he's coming out into the road. We're just giving him some space. Here he comes. So probably the second, maybe disgruntled elephant we've come across in Wangi. Not really, not really too disgruntled. And what we just, we're just leaving the car in reverse and I've given him about 50 meters, 80 meters and uh, just to get him used to the sound of the car and um, yeah, just giving him his space. No need to push him and uh, he's walking towards the car but through the bush so he's trying to be clever and uh, we're just gonna see what he does. But yeah, he did bellow out. He did bellow out and let us know that he's not happy. And, um... <laughs> tell you, it's, a, it's an adventure, man. It's a real adventure. Uh, you, Wangi, you get a true sense for wilderness, wild encounters on the road and in camp. And uh, it's just, uh, it's exhilarating, but you know, don't, don't push elephants. Don't ever push elephants. Rather let the safari vehicles do that. We've come up with a theory that elephants know the, the safari vehicle motors. They know the sound of the exhaust. They, they're, they're accustomed to that. And as more and more people begin to visit Wangi again, you know, obviously animals being quite skittish now will start to settle and uh, become accustomed to to vehicles and, and people visiting. So just bear that in mind when you come to places like this and enjoy it, you know, absolutely enjoy it. And uh, just take your time and always remain cautious, always remain cautious. And uh, we just can't see him now. And uh, yeah, it's quite nerve wracking, but, but lacquer at the same time, you know. I'm sure we'll be fine now. What do you think, Reese? So yeah, you can just go.
we are back in Botswana and I tell you what it's just because of the sun and because of the heat I didn't really film the crossing over through the Panamatenga border post but let me tell you something what a border post small quaint lot of tourists going through that border post the road from the Zimbabwean side to Robbins camp is in okay condition uh, we saw an iX35 high and die iX35 traveling on the road so it's okay and a lot of tourists crossing over from Botswana into Zimbabwe and vice versa so a nice quaint little border post and really really quick we have just filled up at Panda Matenga again a massive shout out to this trip's sponsor Sereth Logistics thank you guys for your support and helping me get out on this adventure absolutely without your guys help it's a trip that just would never have happened we're on our way now to Elephant Sands the place it all started let's get there we'll chat then but so far good to be back on nice solid tar roads in Botswana and really fortunate to do that because I tell you some of the roads we've driven been really hardcore so be happy with what you've got when you've got it and make the most of things you have no idea about and just try and enjoy as I always say Good to be back in Botswana. I love this place. Love Elephant Sands. Let's get there. And I think, Reese, it's time for some food because we didn't eat last night on account of all the elephants. Maybe a cold beverage because, again, we didn't have one last night on account of the elephants. It's so good to be back in Botswana and really kind of sad to be leaving and almost ending a trip like this. An exploration of true proportion but we've still got one more night of epic elephant sightings and wild encounters. Looking forward to it. We are here at Elephant Sands. We are enjoying a sunset and the elephants are using the elephant corridor to move freely in and out to the water hall that is situated right on the doorstep of the reception area and bar. It is spectacular. I tell you, I always love coming to Elephant Sands. It might be a bit uh, overcrowded at times, but if you get the right campsite, this place just simply is a special, special spot. So this trip, we have spent 113 hours in the car we have done 4,637 kilometers at this point. We have used 669 liters of diesel and we have traveled through not one, but four different countries. We started in South Africa, drove through the eastern side of Botswana, entered the western side of Zambia and made all our way over to the middle of Zambia where we entered into Zimbabwe. On the western side of Zimbabwe, we traveled from north right through to the south where we exited at Wangi, Panda Matenga border post into Botswana and we are here now. 20 days, two people, one vehicle and simply enjoying an expedition unlike I've ever had. Truly new roads we've adventured, new places we've seen, game reserves and wildlife areas I've only heard about in magazines and to be honest, it's been one of those special, special trips for me. A trip I'll never forget. I've got an elephant that's just passed me on my right shoulder. I suppose that kind of sums up this whole trip, really. Wild encounters in wild places great to meet so many fantastic overlanders on our route and journeys and nice to get to chat to them and find out their routes and where they've been to more importantly how they found overlanding in africa and generally the consensus is it's absolutely a once in a lifetime opportunity where the real spirit of overlanding is and that's in africa we have and share one commonality between all of us and that is the will to adventure, the will to drive and explore, to utilize and being self-sufficient out of the vehicle wherever we go. And that has never rung more true than on this trip. I'm Ryan Crocker and this has been another 4x4 Ventures episode where I take you on the adventure. Stay safe, keep trucking and until the next one, 
enjoy. I'll see you out there and as always, I look forward to it. From here at Elephant Sands, cheers. A big thank you to my Patreon legends. Thank you for your support. Sign up to my Patreon, link down below. In the next episode, in this little segment, we're going to do something a little bit different. I thought to get my brother-in-law to ask five questions that maybe you want to ask. Take it away, buddy. I answer some questions about overlanding in Zambia and Zimbabwe. As if I'm going to throw in a lot of money. now realize overlanding is not easy. What do you find the big differences between them? Which one's been your favorite so far? Which national park is best? The differences. I think the strange thing is is that and Reese catches me off guard. As a full-time YouTuber, how is life and how can us as fans help you? Wow, that's a big question, man. This one coming soon.